Of course, no, none of our shows is complete without a visit with our very favorite whaler, Mr. Reginald Hegarty. Mr. Hegarty? No uh, program on whaling is complete unless we talk about scrimshaw. This was a purely uh, American art developed by the whalemen. And today we have with us uh, Mr. Milton Delano from Fairhaven, town across the river from New Bedford. And he's one of the main uh, practices of this art of scrimshaw. Just what is scrimshaw, Milton? Uh, thank you for asking me, Mr. Haggerty, because uh, as we have a folk song and folk song singing, uh, it is strictly uh, an original American folk art and is the art of carving or of engraving whale bone or whale ivory. For example, uh, this happens to be an old piece of scrimshaw, which is a carving of a jagged wheel. Uh, we have here a base relief carving on a sperm whale tooth showing a sulfur bottom whale. Well, Milton, just how is this done? Uh, actually, it's, I try to do it, Mr. Haggerty, the same way that the uh, whalemen who originated this art uh, in the same fashion and the same methods. However, I have one advantage. Uh, they took a great deal of time because of poor tooling and of what they had to work with. I have the advantage of being able to use some of the finest steels procurable and uh, it doesn't really take a talent to be able to do this. Well, can anybody do it? Could you uh, give us some idea about just how it's done so somebody wanted to pick up the... First, let me show two or three pieces of real old Scrimshaw. You'll notice that this one right here that I placed in front of me is done with all little dots placed closely together. It is possible that some whaleman had taken a picture of uh, the person that is of and laid it over the tooth and just pricked very lightly and then afterwards pricked even harder. You'll notice this other old tooth looks almost like a mechanical drawing close to. Uh, I think you will find that that was used as uh, many people could do today if they wanted to try scrimshaw by using a template or a, anything a straight edge or anything that would lie flat over the curved surface of the tooth they would be able to uh, do the mechanical type scrimshaw. Could you uh, show us perhaps a little how it is done? I notice you have your tools there. Yes, I brought brought my tools and uh, basically you have to start off first with a tooth as you That's right. can be well aware. Uh, a tooth, as many people think, do not come polished as this large tooth here. Instead they come very rough and very dirty. So the first thing you have to do naturally is clean the tooth and then by use using uh, wood rafts or files, you just start filing down on the tooth. Also, you can use pieces of steel cut flat and scrape in that method. That's a little quicker. That is the quickest way to do it. However, the main objective, if you are going to engrave, or the engraving part of Scrimshaw, which I have the most of here, is the important thing is the very, very smooth surface. The object is to close all the pores. After you have filed, however, you start off with various grits of paper. Now, at this point, it is a very good idea to save all your little filings and chips. What do you use those for? When you get down to the final polish and using light cloths, cloths your final polish is done with the ivory chips and rubbed in your hands. It has been said that uh, on various uh, whaling cruises that they started off with the uh, Coopers who had calloused hands for the rough polishing and ended up with some of the boys in the galley who had flour on their hands and the cooking products and their hands were smooth to get a final polish. In other words, they had to have, even on the hands, they had to have different uh, grades of, of skin. Right. Also, it has uh, also been noted, uh, everything has come either from people who have had the experience, like yourself, I've had to find out from them, but it has also uh, should be noted that as you'll see in some of these older teeth, you'll see that some of the drawing is very crude. To me, the old scrimshaw that is on this table is worth all of the ones that I have done put together. 
for the plain reason that uh, that is the original. I notice that they're darker than the others. What makes them so dark? Age. Age? Age is what makes them dark. And uh, I understand you made uh, uh, tooths, you and uh, Scrimshaw a tooth for the president. Yes, I'm happy to say that the former president, President Kennedy, was one of the greatest sponsors of uh, Scrimshaw in the world today, in the present era, and had probably the largest private collection. As Attorney General, General Robert Kennedy said on uh, a while back on his drive to this memorial library, he had a few teeth that uh, belonged to the president, but it was the president's uh, uh, wish that every Christmas and every birthday that he received a piece of item in Scrimshaw. This here was the one that Mrs. Kennedy, or Jacqueline Kennedy, ordered for Christmas present for Christmas of 1962. The original tooth, for comparative size, you can see where the ruler in the background is cut off at nine and one half inches. The mate of the tooth and as far as the position in the jaw was this tooth right here. Oh, I'd say that tooth there came from a whale that must have been at least 90 foot long. That, Mr. Hagerty, you would know more about than I am. However, very quickly, I would like to show a chance someone is interested if they ever wanted to try this, they get the tooth, very important, get a very fine polish. This one I have cut down a little on polish so there wouldn't be too much reflection, but it's a basic uh, illustration of stripping a jar of teeth for the purpose of scrimshaw. All I have actually done there is outlined it. There are places, and incidentally I am now using a phonograph needle for a novice uh, type of thing that anybody would like to try, and just doing some basic shading. After one has scratched in all the lines, they, they just smear on. Now you can use lamp black, you can use Higgins ink, any type of waterproofing. The feature being that where you have polished, you have closed the pores, where you scratched, you've opened. You allow a few seconds for that to dry. And a damp cloth, and when you have taken off the Of course, it's always good to moisten it because saliva will cut ink better than water. But when you have taken off, you see that I've added the shading into the drum where they are saving the teeth. That's interesting. Is that the way you do it all? Some I have tried in color, as this one of Mark Twain and the Sioux Indian. Well, the principle is the same on all The principle of it. is exactly yeah. the same, except don't make the mistake and start off with a light color, because when you put a dark on, you uh, naturally would get the lights the dark also. Oh, I see. This one here, I would not call Scrimshaw. It happens to be, was done special for the premiere of Moby Dick when it was in the Bedford a few years ago. That happens to be, uh, let's say, ivory uh, miniature or a casein on ivory. Well, then, as I am to understand you, what really is scrimshaw is something made out of ivory, that is, the whale's teeth, or perhaps the jawbone. Or the whale bone. Uh, anything else uh, is not really scrimshaw. It is done in the same method, but not scrimshaw. Oh, I scrimshaw is the art of carving or engraving whale bone or whale ivory. Do they use any other material in conjunction with this? Uh, they've used ebony and mother of pearl, but the main uh, art is scrimshaw. Well, thank you, Milton. That, uh, I guess, think the people will have some idea of how that is, and now we'll turn it back to Mr. Healy. Thank you, gentlemen. That's, uh, that's quite an art, quite an art.